addition of carbon to iron is probably the most important addition in cast irons and steels. This makes a diagram called the iron-carbon equilibrium diagram very useful. Equilibrium means that enough time has been allowed on heating and cooling for any reactions to fully complete. Many of the basic features of this diagram influence the behaviour of the most complex steel alloys. The diagram is used to understand what structures will be formed at what temperatures and at what carbon contents. We can also see at what temperature different compositions melt and we can calculate how much liquid and solid will be present at a given temperature and can see when a steel will be fully solid. We can also calculate how much of each structure or phase will be present at a given temperature. On the diagram there are several points of interest. A1, the temperature at which austenite turns to perlite. Below this temperature, austenite, gamma iron, does not exist. This is 723 degrees Celsius. A3, the temperature when ferrite, alpha iron, transforms to austenite, gamma iron. For pure iron, this occurs at 910 degrees Celsius, but lowers in temperature along the line to 0.8% carbon. Then it increases in temperature up to 2% carbon. Liquidus temperature, the temperature at which steel of a given composition fully turns to a liquid. Below 723 degrees Celsius, we can see Fe3C, which is iron carbide. This is called cementite, which is a ceramic compound of iron and carbon. Steels with less than 0.8% carbon consist of a structure of ferrite and perlite. Perlite is a structure that consists of iron carbide, cementite, and ferrite alpha iron in parallel laths. Above 0.8% carbon, cementite and perlite are primary constituents. If we take an example of a 0.3% carbon steel, the steel is molten until we cool to 1510 degrees Celsius. At this point, the liquid iron starts to solidify into delta iron. From 1510 to 1495 degrees Celsius, the amount of delta iron increases while the amount of liquid decreases. At 1495 degrees Celsius, the body-centered cubic delta iron transforms to face-centered cubic austenite. As we continue to cool to 1454 degrees Celsius, the amount of austenite increases and the liquid decreases until we have a fully solid austenitic structure. As we decrease in temperature further, the structure remains austenite until we hit 820 degrees Celsius, where it starts to form body-centered cubic ferrite. From 820 to 723 degrees Celsius, the amount of austenite decreases and the amount of ferrite increases until the remainder of the austenite will transform. But as austenite has a higher solubility for carbon than ferrite, the ferrite that forms will not be able to accommodate all the carbon that was contained in the austenite and thus the remaining austenite will form a mixture of ferrite, alpha iron and iron carbide, cementite. This structure is known as perlite. Here we can see some examples of different carbon contents and the structures produced. Low carbon. Structure consists primarily of ferrite with small grains of perlite. Medium carbon. Structure consists primarily of perlite with a small percentage of ferrite. High carbon. At 0.8% carbon, the structure consists perlite. Above 0.8% carbon, the structure consists of perlite and cementite.